Hello students, so today we are going to be talking about the author Kate Chopin. It is pronounced Chopin, not Chopin. So you'll see here that Chopin was born right in the middle of the 19th century and died in 1904. There are two major themes that span all of Chopin's large body of works. Um, the first one would be the intricate details of life in Louisiana, uh, namely New Orleans. Uh, also, the other theme is the strength that comes from a woman creating her own identity. Um, this last theme is one that we're going to investigate further when we read our short story, uh, the story of, story of an hour. So in her time, Chopin wrote two novels. She wrote At Fault and she wrote The Awakening and she also wrote many, many short stories. Chopin was born Catherine O'Flaherty, and she was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Her father was an Irish immigrant, and her mother was of French-Canadian descent. Um, her father died when she was just five years old in a train accident. Uh, if I were you, I would keep this detail in mind as you read the story of an hour. Um, at the age of 20, she married a man named Oscar Chopin and moved to New Orleans with him. Um, Twelve years later, Oscar Chopin died and left Kate with um, $12,000 of debt. Um, in today's money, this is about a quarter of a million dollars. Um, after his death, Kate did not sit at home and grieve for the rest of her life. Instead, she is known to have flirted with many local men, and it's possible she even had a relationship with a married farmer. Uh, so in total, Chopin's identity was not at all attached to her deceased husband's identity. Uh, in 1985, her mother died, and Chopin felt depressed because of losing her husband, losing her mother, all the debt she was in. Um, so her doctor thought that she could get out of her depress depressed state uh, by writing. She was mildly successful in her time, uh, but her novels, especially The Awakening, were just too controversial for their time, and they were open to a lot of criticism. Um, of course, The Awakening and several of her other stories are heralded today as major um, feminist documents. Finally, in 1904, while she was visiting the World's Fair in St. Louis, Chopin suffered a brain hemorrhage and died at the age of 54. So, as we're reading Chopin, it's important to keep in mind the, the specific way or some ways that you can be successful in reading her. Um, reading the story of an hour which is the short story we're going to read, is an interesting exercise because the plot really doesn't mean much. Um, it's a simple story if you just look at the plot. But the language of the story does a really cool thing. It transports the reader into Chopin's brain. A lot of people say that her short stories, if you comp compile all of them, you can come up with her autobiography. Now, that's kind of hit and miss sometimes because not everything is a, is a fact that she gives us in the short stories, but if we stay away from the plot and just look for the language, a lot of people say we can find the autobiography in those short stories. So if you truly pay attention to the language that's in the stories, you can catch her passion for the strength that can be found uh, in women. So finally, I have a short clip from an HBO show that's called Treme. Uh, the show is set in New Orleans right after the recent Hurricane Katrina. Um, in this clip, there's a teacher played by John Goodman, and he's speaking to his students about the end of Chopin's novel, The Awakening. So we're not reading The Awakening, but the themes that Goodman's character talks about are certainly fitting for our short story. The ending of the book is not the end. It is a transition, a rejection of disappointment and failure. The farther Edna walks away from the constraints of society and convention, the more free she becomes. She's not moving toward the darkness. She's embracing spiritual liberation.
So ideas like liberation and freedom, those are the kind of things that you're going to want to be focusing on when we get to the story of an hour. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day.